Welcome to the Coach's Corner, brought to you by Pulaski Electric System. I'm your host, Steve Pierce. Along beside of me, Bobcat head football coach, Walt Smith. The Bobcats traveled to Bedford County. Shelbyville Golden Eagles was the opponent. The Bobcats lost in a shootout, Coach, 48-31. Yeah, it was, uh, it was up and down the field all night long. Uh, felt like at one point in the game, you kind of felt like whoever had the ball last was going to come out on top, and uh, they made a few more plays than we did at the end in, uh, in the fourth quarter and, and kind of outscored us there in the fourth quarter and stretched it out. Coach, uh, we had talked about, and you had talked about, finishing, you know, finishing plays, finishing a game, and also getting off to a, to a fast start. Quite the opposite happened to the Bobcats the other night. The Bobcats go down 14 to nothing quick. Yeah, uh, again, it was. I, I felt like we were a little too pumped, maybe. I thought Trevor was a little too pumped to start the game uh, with the TV and all that stuff and maybe tried to do too much that first series. Uh, he missed two reads on that first series, and the second one cost us with the pick six. Uh, and then defensively, we just didn't get lined up right uh, on their second play from scrimmage, and they went the distance. Uh, but one good thing about it, I thought we bounced back, you know, and were able to take the lead 17 to 14, kind of erase that. But uh, Again, I, it's just uh, you know it's stuff you shake your head at. We're we're doing things to try to get ready. We're doing things all week on how to get it off the gate quick and things like that. And uh, for some reason this 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 year we just haven't been able to come out of the gate good. And uh, we've got to do a better job of that to get ready to practice to do that. And on Friday nights leading up to the game, we're going to change a few things and see if that helps us out. Coach, it was a <clears throat> seesaw battle the first half. Uh, you know you called it just big play after big play on both sides of the ball. Yeah, uh, we, we, we got them in several third down and long situations and they just seemed to always be able to convert. We didn't help them. We didn't help ourselves, uh, you know, several times. Had a couple of offsides penalties, had a couple of blown, uh, blown things here and there, but uh, just couldn't seem to get off the field on, on third down on defense. And uh, offensively, we'd move the ball, uh, but we had a couple three and outs that, that we never like to do. Uh, you know, even if you're not going to score, we want to move the ball and give that defense some rest. We had to. We, I think we ended up with three three and outs Friday night, which is way too many. Uh, but, uh, you know, I felt like we made some plays offensively enough to, to stay, keep us in the game. And uh, defense, they hats off the shovel. They had a good game plan and exported some things. Uh, Coach, the offensive line, I think without watching film, it looked like their best performance of the year. Uh, definitely. I, I felt like it was their best performance. Uh, I think Jordan Tucker was right at 200 yards. Not sure exactly on the numbers uh, exactly, but he – he was close to 200 yards. I felt like it was by far their best performance against maybe the second best defensive line they'd faced all year uh, behind CPA there. But uh, uh, Shovel was not bad up front, and I felt like we did a really good job blocking on Friday night and got the run game going, and that just opened up more of the passing game. Uh, you know, again, offensively, I felt like, especially the first half, and, and uh, a lot of times in the second half, we only had three possessions in the second half, and uh, two of those went. Uh, for longer than 70 yard drive. So, uh, you know, it's it, it's one of those things we just got to get off the field on, on defense a little bit more and uh, keep our field, keep our defense off the field when we get the ball on offense. You're going back to the first half, right before halftime, <clears throat> the Bobcats defensively you sort of give up on a play that you think the quarterback's going out of bounds, but he didn't, and they score. And 40 something seconds left on the clock. The Bobcats come back and score. What what an exciting it, exchange! It, it was, uh, you know, we, we we had a bad play there at the end of the half and kind of let them get a cheap one on us. But uh, instead of hanging our heads, that was another thing I was really proud of them. Uh, instead of hanging our heads right there, we we got the ball back in pretty decent field position, and Cameron just went and made two plays for us right there with pretty good throws from uh, Trevor, uh, also, and uh, got us back to within three before the half. It was a big time, uh, exciting finish of the halftime. You alluded to it a little earlier. The Bobcats come out in the third quarter, <clears throat> just a beautiful drive down the field. It took a lot of time off the clock. Uh, you know, and at that time, you had to feel pretty good about your cats taking that drive and going all the way down the field and putting points on the board. Yeah, you know, at that, at that point, they come out and score. It's 34-31 uh, with about six minutes to go in the third quarter there, three minutes to go in the third quarter there, and uh, we're kicking off for them. And uh, on that very next drive, we get them, and again, we get them in third and nine, and uh, they're able to get behind us a little bit and throw a, throw a ball up that we probably should have had an interception on, uh, just uh, one of those fluke blown coverage things, and uh, they were able to score there. And then the very next position, uh, we went three and out again, put our defense back on the field really quickly, and uh, they were able. That's when they were able to jump out on us. Coach, each week, 
you look at an opponent and just because somebody else plays a particular team a certain way, it's all about matchups and how you match up with a team. Defensively, uh, you're going to make a few changes you, in the back of your mind. Is there some things you want to do a little different personnel-wise next week? Yeah, we're going to do some things. Uh, personnel-wise, we are going to make a few changes. Uh, Gonna gonna ask Lucas to play a little bit more on that side of the ball this week. Uh, just he's just too good not to. He's yeah, he's gonna make him tired, uh, you know, and he's gonna have to rest some on offense a little bit. But he's just too good an athlete not to have out there on defense. Um, and then we're also gonna we felt like Shevel did a good job of getting us in the look they wanted uh, and, and taking advantage of what they could out of that look. And we're gonna do we're gonna do a better job of uh, not getting in a look all the time against a certain set. Uh, and we think that's gonna help us also. You know, it's always it's like a chess match, coach. It is. You know, it's the coaching staffs. You you look at the game plans to start the game, and then you look at the changes at halftime. Not a lot of people realize though what happens actually during the game. How you're trying to make adjustments, both personnel and scheme wise. It was uh, we you know that after the first play right there that they uh, the quarterback ran a long touchdown run. I felt like we made a really good adjustment and kind of uh, slowed them down there at start at the halftime, the end of the first quarter, start of the second quarter. Uh, I thought it was a really good adjustment, and, and they had to punt a few times. And I felt like when we got back up 17 to 14, they were a little bit on their heels. Uh, and then they kind of uh, found us a set. They gave us a tight end that they hadn't showed a whole lot of on film, and um, we were able to take advantage of the tight end with two receivers to one side and kind of hammer us a little bit running the ball right there. And uh, uh, got a really good running back. I think uh, Purdue offered him last week, uh, so he, you know, he's definitely a good football player. And uh, we didn't do a very good job tackling Friday night. Yeah, one thing you did notice, Coach, Shelbyville had a lot of athletes on the field, 5A school, and uh, just a really good program. They did, and uh, they, they, Coach Hardy does a great job. Uh, you know, I think this is his third year over there, and every year they've gotten better. Uh, since since our game with them last year, I think they've only lost two games. So uh, uh, in the last 12, they're, they're, they're 10 and 2 in their last 12. So they're, they're a team that's going to definitely get better, and I think come playoff time, they're going to be a team to reckon with at 5A. Coach, we're setting past midway in the season. The Bobcats currently three and three, but from here on out, other than the Innsworth game, everybody we play is basically the same size school as we are. Yeah, and, and it's all region games. That's, that's kind of what we talked about Friday after the game. Uh, you know, at the first year, nobody nobody thought we would be three and three and nobody wanted to be three and three, but uh, we are what we are right now. Uh, but the good thing about it is we still control our own destiny as far as making the playoffs and getting the playoff seed. Uh, if we win the rest of our district games, we get the second seed automatic berth and the higher seed in the playoffs, uh, you know, to get in. And that's that's our goal. Once, you know, obviously the first goal is to win the district. And then after the CPA game, okay, well now we've got to get that second seed to automatically get in. And we've still got that goal. It's still attainable. And all we've got to do is take care of our business. Yeah, you mentioned it, Coach. Do you think that sort of sunk into <clears> the players that realistically – if we take care of business within our district, come playoff time, we're setting the exact same spot that we were this time last year. A absolutely, you know, and we, we talk about, uh, last year we talked about the schedule and this year we've talked about the schedule and it is a tough schedule. Uh, last year we were able to beat some of these <clears throat> bigger schools and, uh, it, you know, break here, break there, and we were able to beat them. Uh, and this year we haven't been able to do that in the first two games, but uh, with, with Tullahoma Shovel in that District 8 uh, over there. But, uh, uh, you know, again, it, it's still, Record-wise, we're not, but as far as the district goes, we're sitting in the same place we were this time last year uh, with the same goal still out there for us to get. Well, this Friday night, it's going to be something the first time it's ever happened, and it's going to be a really exciting night here at Sam Davis Park, Jack Dare Field. The opponent coming in is the Page Patriots, a 4A school just like Giles County, but Coach, there's going to be a lot of pink in this stadium. Yeah, uh, Farm Bureau uh, come out and uh, offered us a deal. They were going to provide all the uniforms and uh, kind of a, uh, a charity event. They're going to auction the uniforms off or sell the uniforms uh, to raise money for breast cancer awareness. And the, the kids are going to get to wear them uh, on Friday nights. And uh, the cheerleaders will have the stuff on. Everybody in the stands is going to have stuff on. It's just, it just goes for a great cause. Uh, and it, again, it goes back to showing our kids that it. It's not just about football, it's about helping people also and becoming a, a good young man and a good, a good supporter in the community. And uh, this is a good cause for us to support. Yeah, you know, it's going to be really exciting. The Bobcats dressed out in pink. They're coming back home for a three-game stretch here. 
that they'll be at Sam Davis Park, Jack Deer Field. Coach, is so much important, as we t alluded to earlier, about finishing in the district. You know, the opportunity to finish first or second, it all starts this Friday night. It, it does, you know, and again, it goes back to uh, we, we've got to do a better job finishing. Uh, we've got to do a better job finishing in practice. We've got to do a better job finishing um, in the week. Then we've got to do a better job finishing on Friday nights, so individually on the play, individually on the drives, and then overall in the game. We've got to do a better job finishing. Uh, and, it, and it goes it goes to it starts this Friday night with uh, with the first region game district game however you want to call it uh, for these next three district games with Innsworth sandwiched in between there that, that we've got to take care of business. Let's talk a little bit about Page, Coach. What do you see <clears throat> offensively from the Patriots? Uh, they're pretty similar to the Pages of the past. Uh, they 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 lost a quarterback who'd been a four year starter uh, last year, but they've got a kid that's come in. I think he's about six six, uh, really big, tall kid, pretty good, strong arm. Uh, not quite as good a runner as the Bonzel kid was last year, but throws it really well. Uh, they look really similar on offense to what they've been in the past. They're going to spread you out and throw the ball all over the place, screens, draws, uh, you know, trying to get the running back on the edge. Um, and defensively, I, I think uh, one of their older coaches, Jack Daniels, is back as defense coordinator, and uh, they're going to be similar to what a lot of people are. They're going to be a 4-4 cover three a lot, uh, and every once in a while jump into cover two uh, against people that throw the ball a lot. Coach, let's talk about the special teams. What do you see in Page? Uh, well, I, I, I feel like uh, we've gotten better. Uh, obviously, the first year we didn't really start off real well on special teams, but I felt like we've gotten better every week. Our coverage has gotten better. Uh, I thought we executed a perfect onside kick Friday night, uh, and uh, Griffin has gotten a lot more comfortable doing that and doing some directional kicks and things like that. And uh, uh, I, I look for our special teams to be an advantage Friday night as we, that we can take advantage of. Uh, you know, Again, perfect on extra points. Uh, Friday night, I thought the punting was great. Uh, it, not all of them looked pretty, but they, they end up being a net. Anytime, anytime you can net between 30 and 35 yards or over 35 yards, it's been a good job. You know, I feel like we've had a good night punting, and uh, I think Friday night we netted around 34 yards of punt, so uh, I thought it was a good night. Well, there you go, Coach. This, you know, this Friday night, I expect this place to be packed. I think it will. I think Paige will bring a good a good crowd, and I, I know the Bobcat faithful will be here like always. Uh, again, it goes also to support a good cause with the Pink Out game. Uh, you know, uh, come and support it. There's several people that you know. They, it hits close to home to a lot of people with breast cancer awareness, and uh, uh, I, I look for a big crowd to be here. This Friday night, 7 o'clock, your Bobcats will be here at home, Sam Davis Park, Jack Deerfield. Wear your pink because it's breast cancer cancer awareness game sponsored by the Farm Bureau. Everybody come on down here, support the Bobcats and also a good cause. This Friday night, seven o'clock, Sam Davis Park, Jack Deer Field. We'll see you here.